But I see a lot of faces that I recognize either because you're Premier Integrative Health members currently, past members, or I've worked with you in the past. So um, for those of you that don't know me, though, I'm Abby Stanley. I'm the dietitian at Premier Integrative Health. And so really um, on Dr. Dyer's team, I'm really focused on the nutrition component of everyone's plan, trying to figure out what's going to work for each individual and take the recommendations and try to make them realistic. So I always try to say um, I'm all about real nutrition for real people. Um, I get that eating healthy isn't always the easiest choice, but I want to try and make it the easiest choice as much as possible. So hopefully that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, meal planning is one of the first steps in making the healthy choice the easy choice. So I um, really hope you get some good tidbits from this, um, and I'll kind of orient you with your handouts as we go through um, today's content. But we'll go ahead and just kind of dive in here. Let me check working. Awesome. We're good. Okay, so today's objectives really, what I want to cover today, we're going to talk about the what, the how, the why of meal prep, and then also I really want to kind of sprinkle in some tips and tricks, like things that you just learn through real life experience. Because if you're not a meal prepper, if it's not something that you're already in the habit of doing, when you start doing it, it can just seem like a very new and foreign concept, and actually it can seem overwhelming. It shouldn't because it is going to make your life easy, but if it's, if it's something that's brand new to you, you you might not kind of understand the ins and outs. I've been there, I've done it, so I'm hoping to share some of those tips and tricks with you today. So we'll go ahead and dive in here. Um, so first, just when I say the word meal prep, I think that a lot of people know what that means, but you may not. And here I go, sorry, I can't not roam. Um, but <laughs> I'll try and stay somewhere where my back's not to, to everyone. But um, yeah, so when you think of the word meal prep, really what we're talking about is cooking meals in larger quantities and storing them to be consumed at a later date, right? So um, it's really just about cutting down time in the kitchen and trying to make life a little bit easier for you. So um, that's kind of like the what, what you're doing. So if that concept's kind of new or foreign to you, it's really just um, instead of going home each night, deciding what you're going to eat for dinner that night, cooking a meal, cleaning up, and then doing the same thing day after day after day after day, like that would be hard to stick to a healthy diet if that's what you were doing. So so we're going to try and condense, be efficient, and have food left over to eat so that you're not cooking all the time. So um, benefits of meal prepping, it's really going to allow you to have more free time. That's going to be huge, especially when we have so many other things we want to be doing in our lives outside of being tethered to the kitchen. I'm someone who loves cooking. It is my passion, but I still don't want to be in the kitchen all day, every day. So um, definitely want to free up your time so you can do other enjoyable things. Uh, it's going to decrease your food bill. So um, one of the uh, kind of concerns I hear a lot when people are moving towards a more healthy whole food diet is, isn't that going to cost me more money? Well, it's really not. It's going to save you money. And we'll talk about each of these a little bit more in detail here in a bit. So we'll talk about how that will happen. It's also go. Oh, sorry. I got clicker happy. Um, it's also going to help in, uh, in um, just v add variety to your meals. So um, a lot of times when people do adopt a healthy diet, they kind of find what works for them and they just kind of stay in that rut over and over and over. But when you're meal prepping, you have to be a little bit more intentional about uh, planning your meals each week. So it allows you the opportunity to make sure you're getting a variety in meals. There's a seat right over there, Robin, if you want to hop down there. Um, and then it's also going to help with weight management and optimal health. And so um, really what I mean by that is it's just going to improve health overall because you're going to be eating healthier and we'll take a deeper look at that. Um, but maybe weight management isn't really what you're, you're wanting to get out of this. Maybe it's not losing weight. That's not what everyone's focus is. Maybe it's just that you're trying to manage a chronic disease or you're really just trying to reach that optimal wellness or optimal health status where your body's really functioning and running um, the best that it possibly can. Well, meal prepping is going to help you get there. And lastly, it's going to help you have a sharper mind. May not understand that connection yet, but you will hear in a little bit. So let's, let's continue here. Um, so really just kind of want to pose the question, like what's that one thing that you can never get back? You got it. Yeah, you put, you, put it, you put stuff into it, but you never get anything back out of it. And that's time. And life's not going to pause for you when you're wanting to cook a meal. So just because you have to go cook yourself a healthy dinner, life's not just going to say, okay, like hit the pause button and then we'll resume everything later. You're missing out on that time every time you have to go cook yourself something to eat. Um, so meal prepping does take time. It's, it's going to be a time commitment. But the difference is 
how do you get back that time is by decreasing the frequency at which you do it. So instead of doing it every single day, you just do it once a week or maybe a couple times a week. And so by decreasing the frequency at which you have to do it, even though it's a little bit of a time investment up front, it's actually going to save you time down the road. So that kind of makes sense. So it's all about kind of a little bit of trade off. So you do more at one time when you're already already chopping, already cooking, already cleaning, and that's going to save you time because you're more efficient with what you're doing. So um, also savings. So we're at a point now where um, it's a record, record breaking that most Americans are eating out more than they are actually buying groceries at the grocery store. And so that's, that's really a big concern. Um, when you look at someone's budget, most of their money is going to dining out at restaurants. So if you're um, trying to kind of get your finances in order, you're trying to look for ways to save money, eating healthier and meal prepping can be a huge way to do that. So let's just talk a little bit more about how it will help you save your money. So um, it's just a fact that cooking in bulk saves, saves you money. So when you cook in bulk, um, you're going to be buying in bulk, and prices are meant to benefit the bulk buyer at the grocery store. So this is some examples here. Um, if you're going in every couple of days buying one or two potatoes versus just going to a, a like bulk store and buying five pounds of potatoes, you're paying more for those potatoes every time you go in there and buy them individually. Um, another example is um, maybe you kind of think you're saving yourself some money and time by buying the quick little cheap minute rice box that you're just going to make for that one night of dinner but you could go buy like a pound of bulk rice and save yourself a lot of money and use that that pound of rice over and over and over so um, prices are just going to benefit you the more bulk you can purchase in even down to like really kind of snazzy health foods like a laura bar like if you go into the grocery store and um, I know Natural Grocers does this in a couple other places. If you buy like a whole box, they'll give you a 10% discount for buying the whole box versus just going in and buying one bar. So you're actually saving money anytime you buy something in bulk. So there's just little tips and tricks like that that can help you save some money there. Um, one of the other things that's really going to help you kind of identify like what should I buy in bulk is identifying the staples. So what I mean by a staple is like, what are those foods that are always in your pantry or your freezer? You're putting them in um, most of your recipes, things. Uh, well, actually, so you have a handout in front of you called Pantry Staples, and that has a list of pretty much any staple that you could think of in any category of food. So these are things, not all of them are going to apply to you, but you can kind of look through there and even maybe circle like, oh yeah, I eat rice a lot or I eat quinoa a lot. Um, I definitely eat chicken. Um, I eat greens like kale, whatever those foods are that you have in rotation a lot. Go ahead and circle those and then you kind of already have a list of what those staples are for you that then when you go to the grocery store you um, see them on a good sale maybe you don't actually need it today but it's a, it's a decent sale like you can go ahead and buy that because you know you're going to use it at a later date so buying in bulk um, especially when things are in sale is definitely going to save you some money there um some of my favorite places to buy in bulk so i always encourage people if you don't already have a sam's or costco membership like that is something that is so, so, so worth the money. Um, I don't know what I, I think I pay maybe $99 a year. Um, and I save a ton of money on my produce, on my frozen items, on my meat, on my nuts and seeds, um, nut butter, coconut oil. They have so many good healthy options now at those bulk stores that you can go in and, and get a really good deal on. And even um, one step further, if anyone's familiar with like Thrive Market, it's basically like an online Sam's for health food. So again, you pay a membership fee, but you get some discounted prices on some products that when you go to the store, you might look at it and be like, well, man, that's kind of a pricey um, item for like a health food and you might not want to pay full retail price. But if you can get it through like a bulk store like Thrive Market, that can be super helpful. So um, if you're kind of moving towards wanting to meal prep, you're wanting to eat a healthier diet, I really recommend being um, either having a Sam's Club Costco membership, having a family member that has one, having a friend that has one and wants to take you grocery shopping, whatever you need to do for your budget, but definitely make your way in there to get those items. So speaking of grocery shopping, um, really, you know, kind of the old adage is don't go grocery, grocery shopping when you're hungry, right? They say never walk into your grocery store when you're hungry. And it's so true. I mean, I've done that and I'm like grabbing things off the shelves like to eat in the store. And then I'm like, well, I wonder if they'll scan my wrapper later. Like definitely don't go when you're hungry, but also don't go when you're not prepared. And what I mean by being prepared with grocery shopping is like you kind of need a plan in place. Really what you're going to find out is this whole meal prepping thing. It's all about a little bit of planning. And if you can just have a little bit of foresight, you can save yourself, again, time, money, effort, work, 
all of these different things. So um, don't go when you're hungry and make sure you have everything written down. So um, some of my ways to do that, and we'll talk about this. Um, this is kind of your step-by-step -step way to plan it out. So first you're gonna start just by choosing your recipes and or your meals. So um, I say recipes or meals because some people really like recipes. They're like, I have to have a recipe to cook something. Other people, if you're like me, like, I'm like, shun the recipe. And if you try to make me follow a recipe, I'll die. So it's just a meal and I'm gonna make it and put it together. So whatever style works best for you, um, really the first step is just choosing like, what am I actually gonna have to eat over the next week? What am I in the mood for? What am I craving? Um, what's really gonna hit the spot? And just make sure that you have either an idea of mind of the meal and what ingredients would go into that if you're kind of like my style, or that you found a recipe and you know exactly what ingredients go into it if you like to follow a recipe like that. So once you know what you're going to eat, you're going to want to, again, plan it out by writing your grocery list down. Um, it's not really a good idea to kind of, even if you have five things to say, oh, well, I only need these five things. I can just run in. I'll grab them off the shelf and I'll be in and out. It's not a big deal. I don't need to write it down because a couple things are going to happen. You're going to get into the grocery store and first you might forget one of those five things and then you're going to have to go back to the grocery store, which defeated the purpose of being efficient with your time and going to the grocery store in the first place. So that's number reason number one why I always recommend writing it down so you don't forget. You save yourself the time from having to do a follow-up grocery store run after that. The other reason is even if you're going in to grab a handful of things, when you get into that grocery store, like <laughs> their whole, whole goal is to get you to buy everything in that store. Like that is the way the grocery grocery store is designed. That's the way the food products, the labels, the lighting, the music, the grocery cart size, everything down to the T is designed to get you to purchase more items. So if you don't go down with an exact list of this is what I'm getting, I'm not getting anything that's not on this list. You're opening yourself up to um, not even the temptation, but more of like the susceptibility to those marketing messages that you're being sent. And you're more likely to leave with things that weren't actually on your five things that you wanted to grab. Um, impulse purchases that are usually going to end up costing you more money. And then those also end up being the purchases that also kind of get us off of our health oriented goals and directions that we're going towards. So Writing it down, I cannot emphasize that enough. Super, super important. Um, another um, option is to update your grocery list when you run out of something. So this is something that I practice in my household um, and it just makes me on top of it. And that way I don't have to sit down on Sunday and think, what am I gonna buy at the grocery store? Let me write everything down on my list. I have to have, like, it just, that's too much for me. I wanna just know on an ongoing basis what needs to be in my grocery cart when I go to the store. So um, what I mean by this is when I use the rest of my coconut oil that I buy at Sam's Club in bulk, cause it's a good price. Um, the moment I go to throw that tub in the, the trash or the recycling, I go to my grocery list and I update it. And I say, okay, I need coconut oil next time I go to the store. Um, the moment I finish my bag of almonds, same thing. When that thing's going in the trash, almonds next time I go to the grocery store. Um, one of the hacks that I have down here that can make that even easier is having some sort of um, app or a mobile electronic version of your grocery store list that can be updated in real time. So the one that I use is called List Ease. Um, there's a variety of different things. Google Docs does the same thing, Google List. Like you can find what works for you, but List Ease is the one that I like. The reason I like it is I have one login and that one login is shared with everyone in my household that would possibly be bringing groceries into my house. Um, I have several different lists. So I have a Sam's Club list, a natural grocers list, a Trader Joe's list, because I have certain products that I know I can get cheaper at certain places or that I like better at certain places or I just prefer to buy them there. So I have a separate list for each grocery store. The moment something gets thrown out, I go to that list. I just tap the item. It gets added back to my grocery list because it's kind of saved in my pantry. And then when so and so calls me on the way home from work and says, oh, I'm going by Sam's Club. Like, what should I pick up? I say, hey, I just updated the listies. Go to the Sam's Club grocery list and you can pick up everything on that app. So it just updates in real time, no matter who's doing the shopping, they have access to it. And it's a really quick and easy way when you're throwing something away just to pull your phone out of your pocket and say, okay, add that to the list. So that's what works for me. Um, definitely encourage you to find what works for you, but that's been a really good option. Um, Another hack that you can do when kind of planning it out and choosing your recipes and putting together your grocery list is to pick recipes that use the same ingredients. So I'm always shocked by the things I can do with onions, peppers, sweet potatoes, 
some sort of protein um, and maybe some, like quinoa or rice. You can turn that into a soup. You could turn it into like a big like food bowl of different ingredients. You can make burgers with that. I use that same stuff a lot of times in my spaghetti sauce. Like there's just a lot of ways to repurpose the same food ingredients into different flavors, different meals. Uh, so if you can find recipes that are going to repeat ingredients throughout the week, that's going to save you some cost or money when you get to that grocery store. Um, does that make sense kind of how that works out? Okay, awesome. Um, so again, these are just going to kind of save you time and money at the grocery store. Um, already talked about knowing your staples. That's, that's a huge, huge one to do. Another hack that really works, if you just know you're the type of person uh, that even if you have a list, even if you go in the grocery store, you're going to walk down the aisle and see whatever item it is that you're trying to eat less of, and it's, it's just going to tempt you and you're not going to be able to say no. Um, what you can do is do like online grocery shopping. So from the comfort of your home, you can hop on Hy-Vee. Um, I think Walmart does it. I want to say, does Whole Foods do it yet? No, um, but I'm sure they'll be. I'm sure they'll be jumping on the bandwagon soon. Um, but so from the comfort of your home, you can pick exactly what you want to put in your shopping cart. It reduces the temptation or even the confusion of having to go to the store and pick out um, a certain brand of rice. But then you get there and there's 50 other brands, and all of a sudden you're like, I'm not sure which one I actually want. And then you're reading all these food labels. If you know exactly what you want, hop online, add it to your cart that with all your groceries you can have it delivered to your house or you can just have curbside pickup and they'll bring it out to you and then you don't even really have to fuss with like making that decision at the grocery store or worrying about buying anything that wasn't on your list that's going to raise the cost and stuff into the house that you didn't really want so um that's not for everyone but it does work for a lot of people or busy people they're just like i don't really have time to go to the grocery store because once you do that once it'll be saved into your account and you can just hit reorder every single time so that'll save you some time there as well so um, just kind of looking at how are we going to make the healthy choice, the easy choice, that's really what I want to, like the whole point of today. Um, just kind of want to point out that most Americans right now are eating more of like food-like substances or processed foods versus real whole foods. And one of the things that we really believe at Premier Integrative Health is that if we can move more towards a real whole foods diet, and all I mean by that is like food that you can hold in your hand. You can identify it just by looking at it. So like a filet of salmon, broccoli, almonds, avocado, all things that you don't have to have a nutrition label to know or understand what's in it. If you can move towards eating that diet, you're really going to do your body a lot of good. You're going to be able to help with weight management. You're going to be able to manage and reverse chronic disease. It's just going to do a lot of great things for you, but it has to be the easy choice. So how are we going to actually make the healthy choice the easy choice? Um, honestly, they've done a lot of surveys and research on it, and a lot of people don't choose the unhealthy choice because they prefer it. It's not necessarily that they really want to be going through the McDonald's drive through all the time. It's more that it's just the convenient option, and they're really busy, and they need to save time. So that's usually the kind of motivating or driving factor for why people dine out a lot, why they go through fast food, um, why maybe they pick up the pre-made meal at the grocery store versus making something themselves. Um, it's just that convenience factor. And so what we want to do is we want to kind of make meal prepping be the solution to this problem. So um, really, if we can choose more convenient options, we're eating at home more, you're really just going to not only choose those healthier options, but you're going to be in more control of what you eat. And I don't mean like control in this negative, bad way, like I have to control everything that goes in my body, more just like having the empowerment and the, the ability to really have a conscious um, role in deciding what you're eating versus this is just what's easy and it's on my way home, so I got to do it. You're actually getting the power back and making the choice of what you're eating. So that's how it lets you kind of be back, back in control there. So some of my hacks in making the easy choice, the healthy choice, um, my favorite one really is just always having an emergency meal on hand. So what I mean by that, this is a meal that even if I haven't been to the grocery store in a week and a half, I know that these ingredients are in my freezer and in my pantry, and I can whip up a healthy meal of real whole foods. So um, again, kind of that foundation of how you make that emergency meal, it has to be something that is can either be frozen for long periods of time, six months, or it's shelf stable and it's in your pantry. So my two favorite go-tos, one is a smoothie, and this is really good for breakfast. Like I'm on vacation and then I come back and it's like Monday and I'm going back to work and I'm like, crap, I haven't been in the grocery 
store, what am I going to eat for breakfast? I know that in my freezer, I have frozen fruit, uh, maybe some pre-made frozen smoothie bags, which we'll talk about how to make those in a second. Um, and then in my pantry, I have some nut butter or ground flaxseed or different components that I can throw together in a blender, blend it up, and I have a smoothie to go. So smoothie is a really good option for an emergency meal. And then my other favorite option is like a frozen meal. I put meal in quotations because I'm not really talking like a lean cuisine or a healthy choice or something like that. Um, really what I'm talking about is just real whole foods that are frozen that you can throw in the microwave really quickly or in the oven and have a meal in 20 minutes or less. So some of my favorite go-tos are just like a big bag of frozen broccoli or a big bag of like the frozen mix with carrots and cauliflower and different things like that. Um, throw one of those in the microwave. You've got it heated up in about seven minutes. Then in your... Um, um, pantry have olive oil or something like that that you can drizzle on top so just to make it flavorful and taste good um, maybe it's frozen chicken frozen fish some sort of frozen protein that you pull out of the freezer throw in the oven and, and bake that super simple again all of that can be done in 20 minutes or less so really again making the healthy choice the easy choice instead of having to drive through the fast food um, restaurant on your way home you can say oh actually I know I have some stuff as emergency meals in the freezer that if I need to throw something together I can do that pretty quickly so that is a really good hack there. So when we look at weight control um, or really optimal health, really the way that meal prepping is going to help with that is just by cultivating this, this concept called mindfulness. And so this is really just being aware of what, when, and how much you're eating. So mindful eating. And when you're meal prepping, because you're having to plan ahead, you're having to think about what is it I want this week, and then you're prepping the food and storing it in individual containers, which we'll talk about. It's just making you a little bit more conscious of everything that you're choosing to eat. Um, it's going to kind of encourage you to choose foods that are going to fuel and energy or energize your body, which is going to be a really good thing. And it's also going to help you develop like a consistent eating pattern. So one of the things I see all the time with um, patients is that they're either skipping meals because they don't have time to eat or just kind of snacking or grazing frequently throughout the day, um, or they're just having really big meals. And by meal prepping into kind of individual portions, it just causes you to kind of think, what am I having for breakfast? What am I having for lunch? What am I having for dinner? And promotes this more natural eating pattern that really we all should be kind of navigating towards. So brain food, this is how it's going to sharpen your mind. Um, really, the way it's going to do that is it's just going to help you avoid decision fatigue. So research is just pouring in now, um, looking at willpower in our, in our bodies and how it's really a limited resource. So in this case, it's kind of like if you use it, you lose it, meaning that the more decisions you have to make throughout the day, you're fatiguing that willpower muscle, which then, of course, leads to individuals at night. By the time they get home, they've had to decide not to say something snarky to their boss about a project they're working on. They had to decide to smile at their coworker instead of say, leave me alone. They had to decide to show up to a family emergency at school for the kid. All these things that require decision making power, you're just fatigued by the end of the night. And when you get home and it's like, what do I want to eat? And I have to decide what to eat. It's like, I just can't make another decision and I'm going for what's quick and easy. So um, if you've prepped ahead, you have meals at home, this helps with that decision fatigue because you really don't have to make the choice. You already made the choice at the beginning of the week of what you're going to have to eat that week. You, you chose it because you like it. It's in the fridge. It's waiting for you and you just have to heat it up when you get home. So um, that's how it's going to kind of sharpen your brain. And so this is just kind of another one here, environmentally conscious eating. It's really just going to help decrease food waste. When you've packaged everything in individual portions, you planned ahead to know how much ingredients you need for different things. Um, you're just going to be wasting less food, which is a really big concern when we live in the United States here where we have this huge discrepancy between a lot of food waste and then a lot of food insecurity. Anything that we can do to kind of help just not waste food can be um, really, really positive. So looking at kind of like playing with your food or making food an enjoyable experience, making sure you're adding variety. So um, it's really good to kind of have your go-tos like the meal that you know that you're always going to like. It's really easy to make. If you have a family, it's a crowd pleaser. Like everyone's going to be happy when you make it. But planning ahead allows for a little bit more variety in your diet. So um, you don't ever want to get stuck in a rut because you'll probably get bored of that food, which is then going to kind of cause you to look for other options that are going to excite you more, which sometimes aren't the most healthy options. Um, so we just want to plan ahead and meal plan by choosing variety and different flavors to kind of just freshen things up. So um, 
my hack for variety is just to start really small. Like definitely have your two to three go-tos identified so that you always know in a pinch, like this is something I can make that I'm going to enjoy. But try to add something new in each week so you don't get caught in a rut. Um, I'm guilty of getting stuck in having like the same thing for lunch every day for a month. And then I have to kind of remind myself what's something new I can add in this week, whether it's a new meal, a new recipe, maybe it's just actually a new food ingredient, like a vegetable you've never had, um, a fun fruit that you found at the store that you're like, oh, that looks interesting. I've never tried anything with that before. Just pick one new thing and add it in each week to rotation. So you'll kind of keep that variety going. So now we're going to get into like the nitty gritty of like, actually, like, how do you do this? So I'm going to take a glass of water here and then we'll continue. Any questions so far? Okay, cool. Um, so getting started, these are my tips that I kind of just wrote out here of how to really get started with meal planning if you've never done it before. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to take inventory of what you already have in your pantry, your freezer, your fridge. You don't want to do, I've done this before and I get so mad. Like I find a recipe, I'm like, okay, like I'll just take this and buy the ingredients for it. I go and buy like a big thing of pepper and I get home like, oh, I had pepper. Like I'm going to use it at some point eventually, but it's just kind of a waste of money at the time. So um, see what you have that you don't need to buy at the store. Make sure you have a list of that written down. Then you're going to make sure to look up your fun recipes that you want to try. Make your grocery list. Go to the store and get any of those ingredients that you need. Pretty 101 so far, right? Um, everyone just kind of knows to do that, but this time we're kind of planning a little bit ahead rather than doing it at 5.30 p.m. after we get off work. For tonight, we're looking at the whole week and kind of doing it more in a bulk. Um, once you get home, you can kind of decide what works for you. Every individual is going to be different, so think about what works for you and your lifestyle. But um, one thing that can be helpful is to sort things into a food I'm going to cook now, like I'm just going to go ahead and chop this up and cook it and get it out of the way and then store it in the fridge, and then a food that I'm going to cook later. So um, kind of a good rule of thumb, like this says wash and prep vegetables and fruits and go ahead and place them in the fridge. If you're going to use them within about two to three days, so if you're going to like chop up carrots to dip in hummus or have some raspberry is ready to go for breakfast or throw in smoothies and they're going to be used in two to three days go ahead and wash and prep those things and have them ready to go but if it's something that's going to be used later in the week um, I'd actually hold off on washing and prepping those until they're about ready to be used just because sometimes when you you go ahead and wash it and cut it up you you remove some of that protective layer that's going to keep it from spoiling so um Use the two to three day rule there, but definitely go ahead and cook anything that you want to go ahead and get out of the way or put it into the cook later pile. And then if you can, right when you get home from the grocery store, if you've purchased like a protein that you're going to be having for dinner throughout the week, go ahead and just cook all of that right then. Like get home, throw it in the oven, throw it on a pan and the um, like ground meat just kind of browned in a pan on the stove. Um, go ahead and just get that done. So that's usually one of the things that takes the longest when you're cooking a meal. So if you have the protein ready to go, you can just kind of pull it out. So those are just the get started tips. Um, so I really want to kind of just take a second because a lot of times when you kind of go through this with people, it's like, okay, there's a lot of bloggers out there. There's a lot of um, kind of fitness gurus that really like make a living off of like promoting meal prepping and meal plans and things like that, which is awesome. But sometimes they like to make it look very um, like this food's delicious, but their recipes have 30 ingredients. It's like, that's not very realistic. Or they're using their latest like kitchen gadget to do it. Like you have to have the spiralizer to make zoodles or whatever it is. And so that kind of makes it seem like it requires a lot of investment up front to be able to do that. And so I really want to just kind of show you today that it really doesn't require a lot of investment. And that if you just have these three things covered and you have good stuff in your kitchen to cover each one of these, which I'll kind of show you, then you can start meal prepping right away without a huge financial investment or time investment. So first thing is like the tools that you need to prep. You can pretty much do everything with a good cutting board and like a really, really good knife. It's fun and nice to have the blender and the spiralizer and the food processor and all that stuff if you want it. But for pretty much any recipe, if you just have a really high quality knife and a cutting board, you can get a lot done. Um, and the quality of the knife actually really does matter. So this is um, the knives that we have at home and I'm going to butcher. It's the Shun, Shun and um, Wusthof are two really, really good brands of knife. Um, but what I really like about it is you're going to be able to chop through just about 
anything without any resistance. And it's just going to make the actual prep part really quick and simple. So when I was in college, I'd go to Target, I'd buy the knife block where for like 20 bucks of the knife set. And I'd be like, oh my God, that's a deal. I got all these knives for $20. That's great. <laughs> then I'd get home and I tried to cook something, try to cut a sweet potato and it's like not going through at all. You almost chop your fingers off because your knife's not, knife's not sharp enough. Um, and it just makes the process of chopping a sweet potato turn into a 10 minute process versus with like a nice knife like this, I could get it done in maybe two minutes or less. So it just saves you time to actually have quality tools in your kitchen. And since you don't need a lot of uh, materials going into meal prepping, like if you're going to spend money anywhere, I would do it on getting a high quality knife. Um, the other good thing about these knives is they last forever. We've had this one for probably 10 years already, and we plan to have it for probably another 10 to 20 years. You can continue to, continue to sharpen them if they get dull, um, but they really last a, a, lot, a lifetime. So that's super important for the prepping part. For the actual cooking part, you really actually, in my experience, only need two things to do any sort of meal prep. The only two, <laughs> it's actually kind of comical, I laugh, because the only two things we use in our kitchen at our house are this, our cast iron, it's a really, really big one. Um, we use this to make our breakfast in the morning. We use it to make like big bulk meals of like taco meat or um, spaghetti sauce or whatever it is. Anything we're gonna do on top of the stove top, we use this big, big cast iron. Um, it's a really good way to kind of limit toxins in your cooking as well. So you just need a really good pan that you can put on top of the oven or on top of the stovetop to cook in. And then the other good thing about cast iron is it goes straight from the stovetop into the oven. So we can kind of start cooking something on the stovetop and then throw it in the oven without having to switch the vessel that it's being cooked in at all. So um, some sort of really good pan. And then the other thing is some sort of like a good baking sheet or a cookie sheet. Um, and my trick there is I use parchment paper um, to just cover the baking sheet so that cleanup's easy. So um, if I'm roasting sweet potatoes on it, I lay this down beforehand. And so that way I'm not scrubbing the pan afterwards. I'm just taking this and tossing it. Um, I'll be honest, I used to a long time ago use foil for that. And a lot of people will recommend to use foil for that. But there is aluminum and foil and the research does so that it does leach into your food. So parchment paper is another nonstick way to just make the cleanup a lot easier. So Sam's Club, really cheap, right? Um, I stock up on that every time I go. So for cooking, you really only need a large pan or a baking sheet. You don't need any other special tools or gadgets to get that done. And then the last part of meal prepping is really the storage part. Um, so this is what you're packing your food in and saving it for later. And so you can use anything from the glass containers, mason jars, freezer bags, sandwich bags, Tupperware, whatever you're choosing, you do want to make sure that it's BPA free, freezer safe if it's going into the freezer, microwave safe. But what I want to show you here, this is my favorite one. This is just a Pyrex kind of glass Tupperware container. Um, I have a couple different sets of these. They come in all shapes and sizes. What I like about it is it is a glass container. So I can take this, I can put it directly in the freezer. I can put it in the fridge. I can pull it um, out of both of those and stick it directly into the microwave. And it's going to cook fine. Um, it's glass, so really toxin free. And then the lid here is plastic and it just kind of pops on there. So when I take it to um, work, when I take my lunch to work and it spills over, nothing falls out, keeps it secure. If it's in the fridge, the lid doesn't kind of come open and air starts to spoil my food. Like it's, it's very, very secure. So um, another, another area that if you're looking to invest in like one quick way to store your food, I really like this idea. But we're gonna talk about mason jar salads here in a little bit. Um, you don't even have to buy stuff. So whenever I like buy my mayonnaise or mustard, or um, I think this was pasta sauce at the store, my products a lot of times do come in glass jars. I save those, I don't throw them out. I have like a whole cabinet full of different shapes, um, varieties of glass jars. You can put soups in these, you can put like a mason jar salad, you could do overnight oats, you could store nuts in this. Um, you could chop up a bunch of sweet potatoes, put that in here, put it in the fridge for later. So you can use glass jars like this as your storage container. And really the only thing that you had to pay for was the product that you bought in the first place. So um, that's kind of my just hack there for saving some money for storage containers. Okay, so let's kind of continue here. So not gonna go into too much detail here. You have um, a handout in front of you with a variety of recipes on it. There's about three different egg recipes. The reason specifically we're highlighting eggs is one, 
They're a great source of protein. Um, definitely encouraged to have eggs in the diet as long as you tolerate them. And they're really versatile. They can go from breakfast to lunch to dinner. You can make hard boiled eggs, which it kind of um, shows you how to do that on that paper. You could also do like egg muffins for breakfast or a quick snack. There's a recipe on there for that. You could do egg burrito bowls or egg burritos. Like there's just a bajillion things you can do with them. So We've given you a list of different recipes, different ideas there on that sheet, um, but just trying to kind of introduce you some, to some different ideas that work really well for meal, meal prepping. So smoothies are another really, really great way to um, have something quick and easy and you always have the ingredients on hand. So you have another handout in front of you called, um, I wanna say it's Building a Better Smoothie is the name of it. And so on the front of that, it's really just gonna kind of show you how to put ingredients into the blender to make sure that you're not only getting the most nutritious foods in there, but you're getting a really good balance of macronutrients in your smoothie, um, as well as just getting a good ratio of um, different ingredients to make it taste good. So um, that's kind of the front. And then there's gonna be some recipes uh, that go along with that. So if you're someone that is new to the smoothie game, um, you're not quite used to doing it yet, it can be helpful to have a couple recipes so that you have some flavor profiles and mixtures to kind of put together so your first smoothie doesn't taste like sludge or something like that. Um, but once you kind of get in the, the habit of making smoothies, you'll start to realize which combinations you really like. Um, there's some good uh, combo suggestions on that handout too. And you can kind of play around and just put different ingredients into there, blend it up in five minutes or less. Um, Another really great option with smoothies is to make those, those pre-made freezer smoothie packets. And that's really simple. It's just a freezer Ziploc bag. Think about what you want in your smoothie. So if I was gonna put together my freezer smoothie packet, in my packet I would do um, probably some frozen raspberries, strawberries, blueberries that I would just buy from like Costco or something in a big mix. So I'd put some of that in there. I might chop up a kiwi or like a fourth of a frozen banana, toss that into my Ziploc baggie. Um, I'd probably chop up some avocado, put that in there. I might throw in some like handful of kale or spinach for my leafy greens. And then I'd probably just seal that up and stick it into my freezer. Then when it came time to make my smoothie, pull that out, dump it into the blender. I'd add in my healthy fat with like nuts or nut butter, ground flaxseed, whatever that is. And I'd add in my protein powder and liquid and just blend it up. So again, it's just like, how can you be more efficient to just save yourself a little bit of more time? I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but I've had clients before that, um, you know, we have a conversation and they're like, oh, I could do a smoothie for breakfast. Like that's super simple. That's quick and easy. They come back a couple weeks later. I'm like, how's that smoothie for breakfast going? They're like it's kind of taken up a lot of time. And I'm like, yeah, because if you haven't thought it through and you get all those ingredients out and you're like, huh, what do I want to put in my smoothie for day? Again, decision fatigue, like you're having to start your day making a pretty big decision about what it is you're going to eat. Where if you've already made your smoothie packet ahead of time, you don't even have to decide. You just pull it out, add in what you need, and you're ready to go. It takes maybe a five to ten minute process and cuts it down to a two minute process. And ten minutes in the morning, I feel like a lot of us could use that. So that's ten minutes of extra sleeping if you want it to be. So mason jar salads. Um, this is a option for lunch and so again I don't actually buy mason jars I just use things like this um, and go ahead and build them in there there are some tips and tricks on the handout that you have but really the key here is just to make sure that you're layering correctly so you always want to start with we'll use this one as an example um, you always want to start with your dressing at the bottom so that it doesn't run all over everything else to make it soggy by the time you're ready to eat it later in the week so you pour in your dressing then you're going to um, layer in kind of like your rough or hard vegetables, like say cabbage or spinach or maybe some apple or something like that on top. Then you can put in maybe some of your other more softer vegetables on top of that. Maybe any like nuts or seeds or um, grains or beans or anything that you're going to be putting in there. And then you want to always finish with your actual lettuce. So you just put that in the fridge, grab it and go take it to work shake it up when you're ready to eat it you're good to go so that's a really good quick lunch option for meal prepping and then there are um, some links to some other recipes like just to yeah go ahead yeah so if you make sure to layer it that way so that your salad dressing is not touching the rest of it you could keep it in the fridge for four to five days yep just make sure that lids on really tight and yeah you're good to go good question any other questions so far Okay, awesome. Um, so like I said, you do have some uh, links to some more recipes just if you need more inspiration. Um, but there's so many ways to get recipes now. I know I'm a huge fan of Pinterest. All the guys might not be on Pinterest, but at this day and age, I feel like everyone's on it. And it's just a really good way to search for recipes. Um, 
some of my favorite search terms to use, which just kind of helps filter through the abundance that's on there. When I'm trying to find really like healthy whole foods recipes, I use search terms like paleo, whole 30. I always throw in this search term easy because I want it to be easy. I don't want to click on a recipe that has 50 ingredients and steps that I've never heard of. And I'm like, mm, I'm not sure how to do that. Um, so I use that as a search term. Again, just because it kind of filters through and what I'm left with is really meals that are made with real whole foods, which again, is what we're trying to move more towards. So really from here on out, just want to kind of focus on how can you keep this like as simple as possible? I don't want meal prepping to be um, this thing that sounds like far too much time and effort up front for not a lot of payoff because the payoff is huge. So I want to make it seem as easy um, and doable up front that I can for you guys. So um, as far as we're we'll just kind of go through the different stages here, but as far as planning, um, my number one tip is you don't have to like leave here tomorrow and say, I'm going to start meal planning every week. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to create this week's meal plan. I'm going to go to the grocery store. I'm going to do this all at once. Like that might be shooting a little bit too high for some people and that's okay. Um, it's really good to kind of under promise to ourselves when we set a goal. So what I like to encourage people that are kind of just dipping their toes in the water or maybe they're trying to get back in the habit and build a sustainable meal planning habit is just to start by picking one new recipe to add. So maybe for the rest of the week, you go on with your normal kind of eating pattern, what you're used to, but you identify one new recipe, you go to the grocery store, you get the ingredients, you make that recipe, you try it, and then you're going to decide, is this a keeper or do I want to get rid of this recipe? Because not every recipe is going to be awesome. Like it may just be a dud. It just may be that you didn't like Asian food and you chose an As Asian recipe. Um, you're not going to want to repeat every single one. But when you identify a recipe that is like a keeper or like something that you definitely want to make it again, um, I just kind of recommend storing those somewhere that it's like really easy to find. So for me, that would be a Pinterest board. I have a Pinterest board that's like tried and true. These are my meal planning recipes. For other people that are more paper oriented people, um, you may have like a binder in your kitchen. You may just have a specific kitchen drawer that you print off the recipe and throw it in that drawer and that's where it goes. You may have like an Evernote document that you want to save it in. Um, wherever is going to be easily ac accessible for you, Whenever you find a recipe, they're like, yes, I want to throw that into my rotation, throw it into your keepers. And what will happen is if you just add in one new recipe each week, eventually you're going to build kind of this library of recipes to choose from. And when you get to about five to 10, especially once you're up to about 10 different recipes that you've tried, they were easy, you liked them, you want to repeat them, you can rotate through those and have a good month's worth, if not more, of a meal plan ready to go. So you have those recipes that you like to do, you're still getting variety. So you just keep rotating through them. And then anytime you get bored, you just take our tip from earlier and you, it's time to add something new in. So, okay, I'm kind of bored with those 10. Like maybe now I want to go find something new. Um, but you just kind of build slowly. And then before you know it, you have this library of recipes that you're like, oh, I love these. And it's meal planning. It's not that hard because you don't have to sit down and decide what am I going to eat this week? You just have to look at your options and say, this is what I'm going to eat this week. Just kind of, again, decision fatigue helps with that. So as far as prepping hacks, um, really what I encourage you to do when you either tonight or when you leave here is identify what your prepping style is because every single person's different. Um, a lot of meal prepping is kind of promoted as this thing where you go to the grocery store on a Saturday morning, then you come home immediately from the grocery store and you cook every single meal that you're going to eat for the rest of the week. You put that in the individual containers, you have it in the fridge ready to go, and then you don't cook at all for that whole week. And that method works for a lot of people. And if it works for you, that's great. Um, some people, especially if you have families, like to give up a whole Saturday and cook all day is not actually feasible. Um, for others, it just kind of sounds awful. Like, I don't want to spend my whole Saturday cooking. I'd rather do something else. So for those people, I really encourage kind of like batch meal prepping. And what I mean by that is you still follow the same process. You know what you've identified, what meals you're going to make that week. But instead of like cooking everything all at once, it's just like say Sunday night, you're like, okay, I have some time to cook dinner tonight. So you're going to go ahead and cook a recipe, double it or triple it. And then leftovers in the fridge or freeze some for later and then you've got some meals for a couple days and then two to three days runs by and it's like okay now I'm kind of out of my meals but it's Wednesday night and I have some time to cook so you make your second recipe and you double it or triple it eat that for a couple of days stick any of the other leftovers in the freezer for later and then you're eating through maybe Friday and then Friday comes and you do the same thing so you're meal prepping along the way if that makes sense um, maybe it's breakfast and Sunday morning you're like well I have some time Sunday morning so I'll make a big egg bake and that will last me through Friday well that's that's a good way to do that, but you don't have to do everything all at once. So 
first just identify what your style is. I always, always encourage to, anytime you're cooking, double or triple what you're doing. Um, so if it's making more of the recipe that you're making, if you're already chopping, chop some more. If I'm cutting up one sweet potato for one specific recipe, but I know um, three days from now, I'm probably gonna have you know chopped sweet potatoes with my chicken, I'm gonna go ahead and cut up all the sweet potatoes while I have the cutting board out and I'm dirtying. So if you're already chopping, chop some more. If you're already cooking, cook some more. Um, if I'm roasting a couple sweet potatoes just for tonight's dinner, but I know that um, for breakfast on Wednesday, I'll probably want some sweet potatoes. Like, let's just roast them all now. So really what that means is you're just, you're cutting down on the times that you have to chop vegetables, that you have to clean up everything that you've gotten dirty, and that's going to save you a bunch of time there too. So um, another option is buying staple ingredients in bulk now, meaning Identify those stable ingredients as soon as you can and start being on the lookout when you are shopping. Kind of look at where is the cheapest place to buy that. If you see a good sale, like don't hesitate just because you don't have the recipe to make now that asks for rice or quinoa. Like if you see it on sale, go ahead and buy it because you know you're going to use it in a recipe down the road. So um, go ahead and purchase those now. For families, um, especially soups and stews last a really long time. So anything you can do like a soup, um, it's just going to feed a lot of people for a, a longer number of days. And this is also a good opportunity. Like if you do have a crock pot, which is not essential to meal prep, you don't need a crock pot, but if you do, or an Insta pot, a super stew would be a really good way to just cut down on your, um, your input or time that you have to spend, spend prepping and cooking. So that's a really good one. Um, I really love this one. So like using shortcuts. And what I mean by that is like, I don't like to buy a whole head of broccoli at the grocery store and come home and cut it up into little like bite-sized pieces of broccoli because that's work I don't want to do. I'm lazy, I guess. And also it causes a mess. Like then you have the little broccoli shavings all over the place. So instead um, at Sam's Club, I buy the big bag of broccoli that's already chopped up for me. So um, it might end up costing me a dollar, a dollar fifty more. I honestly don't even know because it's worth it for me to buy it already chopped versus chopping it myself. Um, another good example of this is um, buying the chicken breast at the store already sliced into like chicken tenders, um, especially if you're someone that doesn't like to handle meat too much when you cook. Um, if you can go ahead and buy an ingredient that's already been a little bit prepped for you sometimes the cost is the increased cost is worth it if it means that you're actually going to use it and you're not going to waste the food versus buying the head of broccoli and not using it at all and throwing it in the trash like I might as well just pay a couple dollars extra and get it already cut up for me so don't be afraid to use shortcuts like that as long as they fit into your budget and then be really smart about how you clean up. So um, again, in the traditional method of meal prep, you would do everything in one day. You'd have all your containers out. You put everything in there. You'd have them ready to go for the week. If you're more of, I'm more of like a batch style. So if you're a batch style meal prepper, um, instead of like at the end of the, the dinner, going back to my pan and saying, oh, I'll just put all this in one big Tupperware and I'll stick it in the fridge and pull it out and you know serve myself my next dinner. I just get all of these containers out. And as I'm taking it out of the pan, I go ahead and fill up my individual containers there and I stick it in the fridge. So it sounds like a really small change, but it's saving my future self some time. So instead of tomorrow for lunch, having to go and get the whole thing out, put it in a bowl, then heat it up. Instead, I'm just grabbing this one thing, putting it in the microwave, heating it up and eating it. So again, just being more efficient there. So um, just kind of my last kind of ending thing here of questions to ask yourself like when you're trying to implement meal prepping into your your lifestyle and maybe not every tip or trick applies to you maybe you're just trying to make baby steps or just look for ways that you can save yourself some time or some money um anytime you ask these questions you're going to get a good answer and find a good solution so if you can just ask yourself what can i do right now to save me time in the future um, or how can i be kind to my future self is another way to phrase that so that's why i started doing this because i got sick of pulling out a big tupperware and putting stuff in a bowl and heating it up i was like what could i do differently to save myself from having to do this. I could just go ahead and put it in the bowl to begin with. Um, so what can I do now to save myself time in the future? It's always going to get a really good result in the end. And then how could I make this more efficient? Um, how can I make what I'm doing more efficient? If I'm already chopping up something, would it be more efficient to just go ahead and chop up everything in the fridge? It might be. You're already in the mode. Um, an object in motion stays in motion. You might as well just get it all out of the way. And 
kind of, when I look at these questions, it makes me think of like systems and processes. Um, you know, businesses have systems and processes for everything. And the reason they do is because it works and because it does save time, it does save money, and it makes things just work more efficiently. So um, if you can only almost start to look at it like a system and process that you're building around your cooking, your shopping, that sort of thing, anytime you can implement a system or process, it's just going to um, end well for you. So um, yeah, that's kind of the wrap up. I want to thank you again for coming. Um, and I also want to just go ahead and open the floor for questions. We still have a little bit of time um, and I'd love to answer.